Welcome to your next lesson, designing your product packaging. And here's what we're going to cover in this lesson. The different types of packaging options available to you, how to decide what goes on your packaging, how to include product instructions, what you should have already received from your supplier, and how to get your packaging designs created. Now the different options you'll have available to you will primarily depend upon your product and your supplier. And usually the options you have to choose from will be one of the following. Cardboard folding boxes, blister and clamshell packaging, and the one on the left is blister packaging, where it's a cardboard sheet and a small piece of plastic just holding in the product. And then the one on the right, that's clamshell packaging, where everything is encased in plastic and it's really, really hard to open up most of the times. Bottles with labels, so vitamins, supplements, and liquids. And then the simplest packaging of all, clear plastic poly bags. And believe it or not, a lot of products on Amazon are sold with nothing more than poly bag as their product packaging. How detailed you decide to get with your packaging depends entirely upon you. It could be as simple as your logo printed on a box, or it could be a custom designed print with graphics and wording all over it. Keep in mind, however, that usually the nicer the packaging, the better the perceived value when the customer receives your product means they already feel better about it even before they open it up. For example, a 50 cent increase in packaging cost per unit, it could allow you to charge $5 or more for your product, which means it's well worth it. However, simple and clean packaging can absolutely still work well for your first product. Just make sure that you have a high quality product. So how do you decide how detailed to go? Well, you need to consider your target customer, what they value, and then balance that with your own budget. While packaging does play a role in your product success, there have been many incredibly successful products with even the simplest of packaging. Take Apple, for example. While their products are elegantly packaged, their packaging is actually very simple. Next, you'll have to decide exactly what to include on the outside of your packaging. And how do you do that? It's simple. Either head on over to Amazon or physically go out and walk around any store in your area. Look at as many similar products as possible and even take pictures if you want to. That's exactly what I did when I was designing our first products packaging. The safest bet for you is to do exactly what your competitors do. Add your logo, your brand name, and UPC barcode. Add your own wording, but you can follow their format. Add any information unique to your product, such as size, color, and anything else. And add your own graphics and instructions if necessary. And if you're importing your product from another country, you'll need to include made in China or whatever country it's coming from somewhere on the product packaging or on the product itself. We already know that you need a UPC or universal product code in order to list your product on Amazon. Rich Henderson covered that in an earlier lesson. And we also suggest that you add the barcode for that UPC to your product packaging. However, Amazon requires that another barcode called the FNSKU is applied to cover up the UPC barcode when the products get checked into the Amazon warehouses. The FNSKU is a very specific type of barcode unique only to Amazon, and it helps them tie that product to you as a seller and track the products more efficiently throughout their warehouses. So if Amazon is just going to cover up your UPC barcode with their own FNSKU barcode, which should you apply to your packaging? Well, there are two options. The preferred one is to still put your UPC barcode on your packaging. Even though it's just going to be covered up by the FNSKU, it gets your product ready to sell in other markets in the future and makes your product look more professional because almost every product in the world has a UPC barcode on it. However, you can choose to put the FNSKU barcode directly on your product. You can save 20 cents per unit by doing this because that's what Amazon charges to do that for you. Or you can have your supplier or inspection service apply the sticker for you, or even design it right into your product packaging. The choice is up to you, but we still prefer the UPC because you're building a brand and you may decide to sell elsewhere in the future. If your product requires instructions, you have a few options available to you. One is to put it right on the packaging. Simple instructions can oftentimes be included right on the outside of your packaging, and if your competitors are doing it, chances are you can do it as well. Now, if you have a little bit more information you need to give your customers, you can create an instruction manual. They can be printed and inserted right into your packaging. 
In the next lesson, Automatic List Building, we'll cover a service that can be used to create these affordably. And finally, you can also include instructions on your website. You can have text, video, or pictures all showing your customers how to use your product. Once you've made those decisions, there's two steps left to getting your packaging designed. The first is to make sure that you have what you need. In the previous lesson, you reached out to your supplier and asked them to send you your packaging options. And if applicable, they should have sent you a template that your packaging designer will be able to use. Those templates will look something like this. The first is a label template for a bottle that might include capsules or liquids. And the next is for a cardboard folding box. If you don't have something that looks like these, you want to reach back out to them and ask them to send them to you. The final step is to find and select your designer. For a professional option, go to the link on the screen here, which will take you to a company called 99designs. Now they're not cheap and their packages start at $449, but you're guaranteed to have an amazing package design. As a matter of fact, they'll have up to 30 different designers submit their proposals to you and you'll get to select the best one that you like. Now, we fully understand that not everyone can afford that, and there are some cheaper options that'll still work out well. One is to ask your supplier if they can do it. Many suppliers have access to graphic artists, and if they want your business, they might be able to do the design for you, as long as it's not too complicated. Also, you can check out Fiverr.com or Upwork.com. I know Rich Henderson talked about these when doing your logo design, and they also have packaging designers there, and you can probably get some packaging design done for anywhere from $20 to $30. So the next step, make a decision on which route you're going to go and start getting your packaging designed. Let's recap what we covered in this lesson. We learned that your packaging options depend upon your product and your supplier, and that you can choose to make your packaging as detailed or as simple as you want. It's up to you. You can also get your design done professionally or using much cheaper services such as Fiverr or even your supplier. Now it's time to take action. Go get your packaging designed. Then in the next lesson, we'll talk about the power of package inserts.